Well, I think theoretically, well, there's two, there's two schools of thought. One is that nothing that the brain has ever carved into its patterns ever goes away, right? And that's a necessity because um, the patterns you learn, of course, are networked with other patterns. And so, you know, if when somebody promises you they can eliminate a pattern, let's say they can eliminate your fear of flying pattern. Well, that fear of flying pattern is networked with a whole bunch of other stuff. If that would really disappear, then all other kind of stuff would disappear. And so, you know, suddenly you find yourself you can no longer drive while you're driving, right? Or something like that. So the brain makes it so that everything that has ever been learned is there forever. However, how active a neural pathway is, is a completely different story. So you can create an alternate um, pathway, so to speak, so that the information and the electrical impulse goes down a different road. And this road becomes, so to speak, overgrown and no longer used. So that's very possible, but of course one of those things with those overgrown, no longer used roads is that they were the, prime, that they were the earliest roads, so they're the best networked. So it's highly unlikely that you're never going to end up on that road, right? So because you would have to rewire everything. But technically speaking, it is possible to um, block access to a road, so to speak, and create a much stronger road somewhere else. And like, for instance, one classic example for that is language, mm -hmm. right? So I grew up speaking Austrian, and so everything up to when I left um, Europe, because I lived in Austria and I lived in Germany, so I spoke German till I was 26, right? And then I spoke only English, other than once a week with my parents or so. Right? So my uh, English is now my primary language. I dream in English. I even count in English, which was the longest. I used to count in, in German long after everything else had gone to and math, right? But, but now everything's English. And I can write a lot better in English than I can in German, believe it or not, right? because I haven't written in German in 20-something years. Right? So, um, so my Austrian patterns are not really that accessed. But the moment I speak Austrian, everything that comes with that, including the cultural behaviors, the mannerisms, the way my body holds itself comes back. And it's hilarious <laughs> because I go home and I spend a week with my parents and I can tell my body shifts, right? And it's not entirely pleasant at times, right? Because that part of me hasn't been used and isn't really... Like the Manchurian candidate. Yes, <laughs> yeah, a little bit like that. Hello, doctor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, so that gives you... <laughs> Not really, but no. <laughs> but, but yes, so, you know, meaning, meaning that's a classic example of can you get rid of those attachment points and stuff like that? Yes, you can. But when they come back, they'll come back online really quickly. Right. So, for instance, um, you know, sometimes people go on ayahuasca journeys and stuff like that, and they report that when they have done that, there's other ways to do it too, in somatic release, for instance, that stuff is just gone. Like smoking, for instance. Like smoking, right? Uh, or certain painful uh, physical conditions or memories or stuff like that. The capacity to earn a living. The sudden urge to disclose one's deepest psyche on Facebook right after an ayahuasca trip, all of those things. But I mean, I'm, you know, the, the, you can somatically release things and they are gone. And uh, and I certainly can say that that's true even within my own body, that I've just released certain things. But the patterning in the mind, it might not be stored in my body anymore, but I can still access it. And so it's both arduous repetition and building new patterns and finding the right access to release.
there's all kinds of modalities amongst them, cognitive behavioral therapy, right? There's all, and, and, and can work on triggers. You can, I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do to, to give yourself enough space that when the trigger hits, you are not just running down that road. But of course, as long as you're, and, and this is the problem with cognitive therapies, and I'm saying this having been, you know, a counselor for many years, um, and having done extensive academic work around this as well, um, there's only so much talking and knowing can do for you. Because the, the body pattern is so strong that it overrides for the most part your knowledge. The best you can hope for is that you get enough space that you can put your body in a different position, so to speak, right? Or you create a state break that makes it you don't go down that road. But if you actually work on releasing things from your body, that's a much, um, I don't know, much more effective route.